friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. This week, we're back to just us. Yes. Unfortunately for you. I know. We already know who our guest for next month's going to be. Maybe. Hopefully. Also, before anyone says it, yes, we are both in glam. What? I always look like this. They're going to be like, you guys look so much prettier. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Which is rude. By the way. And not my own glam. This is an Adam Simmons glam. Yeah, as you can tell, (laughs) we look very different in this. Yeah. That's because we thought we had work stuff today. Turns out we wasted time. Next Monday. Turns out we got the dates wrong. But that's why we're fully glammed. Um, But we're filming something next week for someone else whom you all love as well, which is going to be very fun and fresh. So... I know, and we have we're gonna be traveling next week. Yep, busy, busy week ahead. Busy, busy, busy. How was your week last week? Horrible. My it was week, pretty bad. My yeah. last my week last week was really bad. Someone literally wrote on my um, dump post on Instagram. They literally wrote, oh, "Fuck, what did they say?" Oh, they wrote, "Mercury and retrograde only lasted one day, but like go off." And I go, "That's not true at all. It's going." I literally put. It's literally going to the second week of May, so I would strap in if I were you. And that turns out to be true because all last week was horrible for me. So why didn't you write but go off at the end? What the I just fuck put, does it even mean? I just put so strap in. <laughs> you thought it was over? You're fucking wrong. <laughs> and Mercury and retrograde does not last for one day. Use your brain. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have a brain. And I thought it was a hate comment. But when out, does Mercury and Retrograde end? It was like May 12th or something. I forget. Let's see. It ends May 14th. Yeah, exactly. Bitch. One day my ass. One day? Why was last week 20 years and the worst week of my life? Exactly. Yeah, it's literally been in Retrograde since April 21st, which makes sense. Because hello, everything bad has been happening since then. No shit. And... Last week, I, I've i already, you guys already know, but like Squid's been having tummy issues. He's good now. Hopefully, knock on wood. He's had a really good last week. But last week, I had to take him to the hospital fucking twice. And that was horrible because I was worried about him. And then the day that I, the last day I took him to the hospital last week, I uh, was just so fucking overwhelmed. Like he's literally like, he was like a hospice patient. Like we literally had like six meds. They each are alternated like 24 hours, 12 hours, eight hours. Right. This one's orally. This one's on food. Yeah. This one's on. Yeah. He, we have to hand make his food. Like it can't be cross contaminated with any. I have a bubble kid living in my house. So basically that was like the most overwhelming day. He was up all night sick, like no. literally all night. Billy and up were, Billy and I were up every hour taking him outside. It was so horrible. I felt so bad for him. So that's why we had to go to the hospital. My mom came over that day to help us out because Billy and I really wanted to work out, but we can't leave him alone because he's like on meds. So my mom was like, you guys go. I'll watch him. So I'm like, okay. So trying to like let some steam off or I kind of re- try to relax a little bit. Yeah. Go to the gym. I'm like 20 minutes into my workout. If that I'm putting a plate back on the rack and then one of them falls down, smashes my middle finger on my left hand, like a car door, bitch. When I say now my, it looks like she has necrosis. <laughs> it literally <laughs> looks like this finger is dead from like here up. Necrotic flesh. I literally have pictures. I took pictures of it for my dump, but then I was like, people are going to be like, you should get your acrylics changed. See how like, I just can't have anything. But anyways, <laughs> everyone's a doctor. Yeah. So then I, I literally, um, my whole finger swelled up, like almost immediately, almost had to cut this fucking Cartier ring off, which would have been horrible. <laughs> I was like, as soon as it smashed my finger, I was literally like, Hey, I give up. <laughs> hey, today you win. Like, I can't do this. Like I literally had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Gym. in the middle of the gym like i started like literally crying and then i billy walked me to the to the a shop nearby to get a cup of ice so i stuck my whole finger in there so i did 20 minutes of my workout didn't even get close to finishing i did 10 minutes of cardio went home because mm. i couldn't i just couldn't i cried the whole way home i was like today has just been one of those days and then i had to like ice my finger and elevate it like this like on a pillow how Rice. silly how silly 
Rice. But I had to get the swelling down. Otherwise, I'd have to cut this ring off. And this ring is real. There's no fucking way. When I was telling Adam that this morning, he goes, oh, just cut your whole finger off before you cut that ring. No I was shit. like, that's what I'm saying, bitch. So, anywho, we got it off. That's why it's on this finger now. No, it's on that finger because you're engaged now. And no then- shit. <laughs> that's why I'm telling you all that now because... Sometimes when I film TikToks, you know how it's like flipped? Yeah. So people see this and think it's an engagement ring. They think the $7 carnelian ring that I gave you is an engagement ring. She's engaged to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally was, no, I've told people, I'm like, it's a carnelian ring and it's not an engagement ring. And then um, now this one is actually my left finger, but it's because it's too tight on this one. So I have to and put it on Because they're one. now engaged. So it's on that <laughs> finger. Hey, the bit, it, it's going to go too far. <laughs> Oh no, what will happen if they think you're engaged? <laughs> I'm just never going to hear the end of it. Okay. So, well, kind of like when I told you I posted a lip sync video to an Olivia Rodrigo song and everybody hey, said I I'm broke not, up. I'm not complaining. I just love tricking people. So, I don't care. <laughs> I just love to lie. I love to lie and I love to trick people. I'm simply a girl. What else do you expect from me? I'm literally just I'm a girl. I'm literally just a girl. That's my next Instagram ca- caption. Literally just a teenage girl. Literally, I'm just a girl. And I'm nowhere girl. near my teens. In case anyone wants to be I've like, been a teen in like <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> no shit. Almost a decade. Yeah. And everyone's going to be like, you don't look anywhere near your teen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know we said that last episode, but I know. Okay. Reli- it's a joke. Hey, hey that's the joke. <laughs> Here's a joke. We were watching Pitch Perfect last night. Oh, and I was yeah. telling Drew, I can't believe they wanted us to believe that Anna Kendrick and Skylar Aston were both incoming freshmen like 17 18 years old yeah. max That's nuts there's no way and they're both easily 25 <laughs> i remember years ago i saw like a i think it was a tweet but they were saying like the reason why so many kids grow up with this like distorted view of what you're supposed to look like as a teenager is because they hire literal adults to play teenagers well, yeah it's like which i had never thought of before like i literally well, like when i watched lizzie mcguire i didn't realize she's in middle school not high school yeah. So like, I'm like only a few years younger than her, but she looks so much older than me. Do you Which know what is I mean? crazy. That's crazy to think about. Mm-hmm. But then you think about like the high school musical cast, like they were all like in their late teens when they were playing like, you know, what's sophomore the juniors. best casted show about teenagers? The summer. The summer pretty. pretty. And that brings up a great, just kidding. <laughs> ah, come on. Ah, come they on. did drop a release date, July 14th. Yeah. And our friend Reese Worked on the summer guy with a movie camera. We love Reese. Yeah, um, he was wrong though. Team Conrad, you're wrong. <laughs> hey, Team Conrad, you're wrong. Reese, hey Reese, it's you're team wrong. Team Jeremiah. It's Team Jeremiah all the day, all day, every day. And don't tell me how the books end because I told you already many times. I stopped reading the third one because I knew how it was going to end, and I don't want to. Do you think that they wish they did to all the boys I love before as a show, like they did with the summer I turned pretty, so it could go on longer? Ah, uh, it's all probably you know, apples and oranges mm-hmm. because like that movie was it, like explosive how popular I it was. I loved that movie. Well, it, it just out. absolutely like a hundred times. It just launched their careers. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't think, I think it's all relative yeah. at the end of the day because I, honestly, I feel like more people knew about that movie than they do about the summer I turned pretty. I think so too. But I guess it just depends on who you ask. Cause like, I bet you all Gen Z knows about the summer I turned pretty. But millennials. But all millennials know about Ugh, to all the boys I love before. I feel bad about myself, but okay. <laughs> when I, I had posted like that same clip of me talking to Katya and talking about people think I'm younger. Mm-hmm. And um, someone said, I just knew you were a millennial. And then I wrote, not too much now. because And someone said, I said, hey, chill with that. Mm-hmm. And someone was like, what's wrong with being a millennial? I'm like, it's, it's offensive. Der- it's derogatory depending on how you use it. Yeah. Because the way you say it could very much so be offensive. Because, mm-hmm. like, if you're calling me, like, a Ray Dunn good doggo, that's just pizza? that's just my baby doggy is, like, that. that's my most used sound on my For You page. Pupper. A pupper, yeah. All of it having to do with dogs. <laughs> Making an Instagram for your baby. And your dog. And your... I find it much weirder to do it for a baby. I think it's just as weird. I think it's much weirder to do it for a baby because that's like a literal human. Like a dog is a dog. Like the dog will not know anything. I know, but I think writing cat. I mean, I but dogs aren't I, creeped on no, by but, pedophiles. No, I agree. I'm saying yeah. what, each one has different like like a uh, pros and cons consequences that come out of it. But I think like you're writing as if the baby or the dog is writing the caption, and I fuck. That's always weird. That. But that's why I said as a baby, like 
that's weird. Because, like, your baby doesn't know that it's doing that. You know what I'm saying? A dog, like, yeah, it's embarrassing. Sure. But okay. it's not dangerous. Like, it could no, be for I a baby. No, I know. I agree. But I'm just saying, I think it's creepier to do it for a baby. Because it's a human that's going to sure. grow up in the world. I can see that. A dog will be dead in, like, what? Yeah. And Depending like, on how old it is. You can never get a dog's consent to make an Instagram, but you should. Yeah. And the dog doesn't speak English. Yeah, like, yeah, he doesn't yeah. He doesn't know any concept of social. Your like, dog speaks English. I know he does. My dog only speaks chicken and that's it. I think he speaks English and like Simlish a little bit. I was like talking about how like my dog literally like worships chicken. Like he's like an apostle of chicken. That's <laughs> it. He's in chicken's flock. <laughs> <laughs> he's a part of the church of chicken. <laughs> that's why he was getting sick because he wasn't eating chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a chicken worshiper. Like yeah. all he knows is chicken. That's why it makes me think of that TikTok that I sang you when it was like when um your owner is literally sobbing about how you saved her life and all you know is your name and the sound of food opening yeah and it's that little cat yeah (laughs) it kind of scary that's how i think about all animals like they just because now when i because i feed my cats wet food now when i open it they know that it's time to eat wet food even though they only get a fourth of a can like each yeah per day yeah so i opened a can of chickpeas telling me they were jumping on me i was like get off (laughs) these are mine (laughs) dude I just saw a TikTok. I think I sent it to you. And it was someone saying like, this is how much um, you should be feeding your cats. You guys are overfeeding them. Yeah. And then it cut to that. that that big cat. And the it was one like, that's sitting on its back. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, that's not what we do around here. <laughs> but then in the comment, the top comment said, my cats would suffocate me in my sleep if that's how much I fed them. <laughs> And it's funny because it's true. It's true. It's funny because I believe it. Yeah. You know? I've watched my cats do the most insane things I've ever seen <laughs> animals do. So I believe it. More than a dog. <laughs> and a dog is like stronger than a cat. But my cats are too smart. Cats are too. They are too smart. Like mm-hmm. they're far too sentient for their own good. I know. Like they're far more sentient than a dog. That's why like if I'm laying on my side, I can tell what cat is walking on me because of how they walk. <laughs> And it's always YB. And so he'll stand on like my shoulder because I'm laying on my side and he'll look at me. So I, I like if I'm laying there with my eyes open, as soon as I film, I close my eyes because he's going to like scratch my face till I pet him. And so but if he sees I'm sleeping and he'll stare at me for a good minute. He'll be like, all right, I guess she is asleep. She passed the test. Yeah, that's why I'm like laying there. You being afraid of your own. <laughs> I know. He scares me the most. <laughs> Not a lot going up up there. Going well, on up there. Well, how was your week? Um, I was depressed last week. <laughs> Been dealing with depression. It's whatever. So not good. Not good. But my mom took me to lunch. What and if you're like, other than that, it was great. Yeah, it was. Yeah, after mm-hmm. that, my mom took me to lunch, and I feel like it gave me a good reset, which is really fun. Yeah. But, so pretty then, bad week. That's it was pretty bad. I worked out a lot last week. We sure did for my mental health. We sure did. Yeah. I was just telling our brother this the other day, but like the greatest scam of life is that like. When you like move your body yeah, and, movement. and cook good, good, hearty meals at home, you feel better. What a fucking scam. I know, dude. I made a. Vegan- I don't, I don't need to know that. You know what I mean? Like, I could have gone my whole life without that information. Oh, dude, I just finished the show Jury Duty last week, though. Oh, I saw your story it was about so it. So funny. And yeah. it, the ending was so cute. It made me cry. <laughs> it was really good. Highly recommend. It's on Amazon Freebie. Whatever that means. Whatever the fuck. I have that watched means. the ads on there. 110 seconds. So watch it. 110 seconds. Yeah. So watch it at your own. Are you out of your mind? Warning. What? Are you being for real? There are like two and a half minutes. Yeah, and I only know it's 110 seconds because it shows it in the corner every time. So I would like get up or and, almost two minutes. Almost yeah. Two minutes. I would like get up and do something while it's on. That's insane. And then I would be doing something for too long and be like, oh no. I, have to run back and I was trying to show my family a YouTube video yesterday and there was a 30 <laughs> second ad and I almost turned it off because I was like, it's not worth it. Or you're, Whatever I was going to show you isn't worth this. I'll promise it's you fine, that. It's fine. I'll just describe it to you. Yeah, it's not, it's not worth it. We haven't, we drew caught us up on The Voice because I have not been paying attention. Me and Billy are avid watchers of The Voice. We yes, we the are. Voice, and then we watched Ian Tongi clips yes. on uh, YouTube. Yes, we did. That's what I was trying to show my parents. Yeah. I was trying to show them an Ian Tongi Ian Tongi And I video. forgot that our dad, like, I think he follows him really closely because he was, like, naming other people that are on the show competing against him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And My dad just loves those clips. Mm-hmm. We just love representation. Mm-hmm. During he's, he's AAPI so Month. Good. AAPI Month. He's so good. Happy AAPI Month to all of you. Yeah. Um, 
what what, what else are we going to talk about? Oh, the voice. Yeah. Let me know if y'all are watching the voice. I am. I feel like me and Billy are the only people watching it, but if you are also watching it, let me know who your faves the, are. So all right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at Babbel. So if you have any upcoming trips abroad or you're planning one, I know me, I really want to go to Europe this summer or sometime this year. I don't know, girl. But if you have an upcoming summer trip abroad, my go-to travel hack is Babbel. Whether you're a seasoned traveler or embarking on your first adventure, communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is the language learning app that's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. So I personally, like I talk about Babbel every single episode, girl, I have been using the Spanish ones. So I really like that the lessons are super fast and easy and that you don't really have to start from zero. I took all the way up to Spanish three in high school and I took Spanish in college. So I do have like a lower intermediate of understanding of Spanish. So I like that I was able to kind of just test my learning and get to the level that I need to keep going at in order to become fully fluent, which is one of my goals. So with Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. So you can start having real life conversations in as little as three weeks. Babbel's expertly crafted lessons are built around real life. You learn how to have practical conversations about travel, relationships, business, and more. So right now you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash two idiot girls girls that's babble.com slash two idiot girls for up to 55 percent off your subscription Babel language for life now back to the episode so it says it comes out every tuesday do they yeah. go on the cock on tuesday or do i watch them on wednesdays i think they come out wednesdays that's which is so, so annoying. annoying yeah i think they come out Wednesdays. so annoying because it now well actually this one might actually come out on tuesday but once they get to the lives i think they come out wednesday oh okay yeah so I saw there's a Pete Davidson show on there called Bub Kiss. I haven't watched it yet. Mm. Um, and I saw a clip of Sebastian Stan <laughs> um, <laughs> harassing him in it. Like he's being Sebastian Stan and he calls Peacock the cock. So it's catching on, guys. It's catching on. I stole it from Jason Bateman. I didn't Shout out Smartless. Oh, yeah. The cock. The cock. I wish more shows were on there just so I could say I'm watching the cock. Watching it on the cock. I just want to ask you one more question and then we'll move into today's subject. Okay. What is on your FYP right now? So last week, everyone was so excited. You talked about doulas. Oh, that's right. What's on your FYP right now? Name three things. Are you okay. still? You don't have to name three. I was just giving you a <laughs> limit because I don't want you to name seven. One of them that I love is like a silly trend and it's that smell test one. When it's like the close-ups of the animals. And oh, they're, they're like, like hello, hey, my name is, come here, I need to smell you. And they're like, wait, let me pass you on to my supervisor. And then it's their second <laughs> animal. And then they do it again. And then they're like, it's determined you stink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sent me that one that was like, hey, slut, come here. <laughs> <laughs> that, I dot, that little <laughs> chihuahua. Yeah, it gets me every time. Yeah. I Even though I know how it's going to end, I still watch That's it. That's where we laughed at the one things my dog ate and survived. Those mm -hmm. were so funny. Dude. And like not the picture ones when they're like slay. Yeah. Not those. No. The things they literally yeah, ate. Yeah, they're like, like six batteries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched this one of a pug who I was like, what the oh, fuck? Are you alive? Dude? Yeah, like how is that bitch still living? My dog ate one beef phone and he was hospitalized. <laughs> and that bitch ate like six double D batteries. It's so funny. <laughs> He's thriving all by himself. Um, but anyways. What was it? Oh, what else am I thinking of? You know the one that was like Cassie, Cassie. <laughs> Where they see like them as as it's kids. like the baby picture of your, or the how yeah. your cat looks now and then the baby picture. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I thought it was cute, but the sound is so creepy. And I saw people saying yeah. my entire FYP and it's them making that sound, and I hated it. <laughs> Let me think about sides of TikTok that I've been on. Right now, I'm on, um, I told you that one of my favorite TikTokers is Blake's Pop Nook. His oh, yeah. His name is Blake. Um, I want to be his friend, and he collects Funko Pops and loves Winnie the Pooh. Oh, yeah. I've, I've never seen that person, but it sounds He's like they so have really cute. Good, good content. He did this thing where they took, oh. like, kind of like that lamp you had, uh -huh. the clear one, um, but it doesn't have a bottom on it, and you put a Funko Pop inside it. Oh, yeah. Like, you just rest it on top. Yeah. I've seen so me, cute. I've seen people do that with, like, stripper shoes. They've, like, filled them with little things. Oh, I thought you said shepherd shoes. No, I heard what you stripper said. Stripper shoes. Scripper, like, you know the, the, <laughs> the pleasers. The pleasers. But I've been on Blake's Pop Nook. So because of him, I've been watching a lot of mystery pin collectors mm. where they get those mystery bags with the pins in them. But um, I've also been watching Sunny Angel TikToks a lot too. And I think I want to start 
I don't oh, want to collect the little, them. The little babies. The naked right? babies. They have peepees. I don't know why. Oh, that's right. What did I compare them to? Uh, Precious Moments. Yeah, that's what they look like <laughs> to me. Um, but that's I, the millennials version. I don't want to collect them. I just want to get a couple and see if I like them. Because if they're creepy. I then... think you're going to be scared of them. You if I so? know anything about you, yeah. But some of them wear fruit hats. Yeah, but then they're just going to be looking at you and you're going to be afraid. I don't like when you're going to you're going to be so scared of them. You put something over them and then eventually you're going to throw them out. I don't like when people line them up like this and they turn their heads. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. So they can fit them all on a shelf. I fucking that's hate that. So weird, dude. Because usually they stand face. Forward. I know. But the people have a face like their bodies are facing in their heads. <laughs> I fucking hate that. It's fucking so. Scary. Maybe I won't collect them. Honestly, I want to get one and just see what all the hype is about. You're gonna be scared of it. I already know. And then you're gonna make it. You're gonna go put it on your balcony or something because it's gonna scare you. <laughs> I already know. In my car trunk. I already know how Dayson is. And you're not even gonna put it in your car because you're gonna know it's in there. You're gonna put it like outside. I already know you. Um, you're gonna leave it somewhere on your staircase <laughs> and be like, someone else can have it. And then it's just gonna be there for for days. I kick it down the stairs. Um. I was on um, runner TikTok for a long time. I never got on there. Dude, I... Me, a person who hasn't ran in I don't I can know how long. promise you I will never in my life pay to join a marathon ever. Because I think paying to run is insane, like for me personally. Um, but I will watch all 10 minutes of somebody running a marathon. Like Where they eat the goo and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. When they go train and they're like, let's come run 26 miles with me. And I'm like, I'm not going to, but I will watch you. And then they're like, mile three, mile four. Yeah. Feeling a little, feeling a little loose on mile seven. <laughs> like when they do that, I, oh. You know what's hilarious is Casey Nysa created that. Really? Yeah. He used to run, he runs marathons all the time, or at least he used to. I know, but he started the, the trend of that. No, I'm just saying he would vlog himself running marathons and training all the time and, and say what oh, mile yeah. he's on. But he would film his watch. Yeah. But can you imagine running a marathon and then holding that fucking big ass DSLR? No camera? fucking way. <laughs> There's he's no crazy. way. He's built different. With the road mic on top too. Yeah. It's crazy. There was um there was one guy who like he runs them all the time. So he's like he looks crazy uh fit in runner's shape, right? And um he ran like a a full marathon, which I think is what? 26 miles. I don't know. Something like that. You could say any number and I would believe you. You're right. I think 26 is the number. It's like 26 and a half or something like that. But anyways, he ran this, like it's like one long lap and you just had, he had to run it like 26 times or something like that. And so he said, um, they took a, they said that we're not allowed to have stuff to like hold the phones, like, like things that can make it so you don't have to hold it physically. Oh, okay. And he well, was that like, makes sense. So you're not like hitting people with it. Yeah. I think it's like a safety thing, but he's like, they outlawed those. So like, I have to hold my phone the whole time. So I'm just going to do it the whole time. And he did it. And he like came in first, Damn. but he's just like, he's on mile 13 and he's you put like, it in one of those sleeves and it just gets progressively sweatier in there. And you don't <laughs> yeah. realize that you can't see yourself. I'm like it. I'm, if I were to do that, like now, I'm treating it like a jogathon where like I run <laughs> half of it and then I walk the rest of the time. Like I'm just there for the vibe. Everyone sponsors me uh, five cents a lap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> five cents a lap. I'm only gonna do two laps. <laughs> In parentheses, I'm only gonna do two. Like I'm redacted. Just, I'm just there for the for the vibes yeah, at that point. I'm that. not even there. Okay, so that was one. I love runner talk. I I love being on that side. And then I'm also I was for a while on um. It's not a farrier, like, you know, like the dudes who clean the horseshoes, not him, but the guy who, who, um, cleans cow hooves and he like pops the abscess and stuff. Yeah. That's not the same thing. I don't know if they're called farriers because okay. I know farriers for a horse. I don't know if it's the same shit. Whose horse is that? Yeah. But it's the guy who's like, okay, here we got a dairy cow. That's how he talks. Cause he's from okay. like Minnesota. And then we got talking like everyone in barnyard. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you got a dairy cow. As you can see, there's a white line lesion. That's what he always says. White line lesion being straight to the hoof. So here we go. Gonna clean it. He does it. He, and he goes. Zzz. And then when he pops in, all the shit comes out. I'm like, ooh. Anyways. Love that. Nice. <laughs> I can't think of what else I look at mine. I've been. I've I was seen- on those backpacking sign of TikTok for a long time. Have you ever seen those? Where the, was that girl who's like, pack my bag for me for the day. That one. Y- there's multiple. And she puts like five different types of makeup removers it's like one's a makeup wipe one's a- no no not that girl okay no but it's, she has all the little cases it's the girls that have all sanrio stuff 
Yeah, I've seen those too. In the backpack and the wallet. Yeah. And then they pack. Oh, I love those. I think that- that's the Virgo in me, but I love organizational ones she like lo- that. She loves to watch it, but look at her bag. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't practice what I preach <laughs> at all by any means. They have that Marc Jacobs tote in every color you can think of. Like those girls. No, I only like watching the Sanrio girls. Okay. Like I, cause they have a, they literally have, they'll have like a, what's the name? Like Karomi, right? They'll have like. Karopi. Karopi. The green one? No. Kirby's the green one. The What's little the name of the little bunny? The little girl. It's like the little white bunny. She has like a pink hat or something. Oh, Ugh. look it up. Cause they're going to be mean. To Honestly, me. the only reason I know, I kind of know the names is because of the Titus. <laughs> That's right. Sanrio characters. I was thinking of Miffy. That's that little bunny. Oh, my melody. That's her my name. melody. Oh, and Karomi. She, Karomi is you're the, saying Karomi, huh? Yeah. Was, is the one with the black. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. It's see like my melody. But Karopi's the little frog. Yeah. Okay. So, my Melanie and Karomi, they look alike, but they have different hats. I think Karomi looks evil. Her hat's pointy. Yeah, and black, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, let's say it's it's My Melody, for example. Who or is Karomi. your favorite? Who is your bias in the Sanrio universe? I honestly don't know enough, I don't think. Oh, I had an answer and I forgot her name. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> let's say it's Karomi, right? They'll have, like, a Karomi backpack. And yeah. then they'll have a Karomi AirPod case. Yeah, I Karomi. know. Pinky Lily. That's who I like. Okay. Thank you, Lily. Karomi. Um, so I saw this one girl who used to take her own silverware everywhere because she like she gets weird about using utensils. OK, so she'd have Karomi like silverware in a little tin and she'd have Karomi wallet and she'd have Karomi this Karomi Karomi tissues, Karomi hand sanitizer. That's so cute. That's crazy. You know what cool. that is? Camp. I think it's committing to a bit to the, the utmost degree and I respect it. You didn't have a favorite one, huh? Did you even like Hello Kitty? You just like the gum, huh? Yeah. I like Karopi. I think I'm just cute. like, whichever one has watermelon gum. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like that one. Um, I never really, I never really um, took to Hello Kitty when I was a no, kid. No, all my friends liked it, but, and I like just couldn't figure out. I think out. it's cute. But I like Pinky Lily. She was really cute. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick my Melody. I think she's cute. The little bunny. One? Yeah. I think she's cute. I know. What are they? Cats? I think they're bunnies. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, those are cute. I like those ones. Yeah. I I just never really took to Hello Kitty, but anyways, those I only like those. I'll watch the other backpacking videos, but those ones really itch some part of my brain. Yeah. So like Bagu's been going really viral, obviously, on TikTok. So yeah. I've been watching all the bitches show what's in their Bagu Crescent bag. Mm-hmm. And they have hundreds of bags in there, similar to like those girls that do the backpack yeah. packing videos. So I did that. It's a mess. I would rather just have loose things in there because I don't I don't remember which bag has which thing. And then there's just too many bags in there. As much as I try to keep my bag organized, it just never is. Like and my then, bag is literally like a treasure chest. Like if you just dumped everything would fall and out. I'm like, oh, there's that thing I was looking for. If I went to a baby shower and did one of those, like I what's would in my bag, I would win. Cause I have so much yeah. shit in there. It like, makes it's me crazy. think of like, like if I made my bag like that, like if I bought all the organizers to hold on my little pouches and all the little things, I would think they'd come home every day, right? Unpack it. You'd feel like going on vacation every day. You have to unpack That's why I'm like, case. I don't have the discipline yeah. to do it, which is probably why I'm fascinated watching it. You know what I mean? It's almost like, like what must it be like? I to feel be like that I'm organized. like observing from from behind a glass, like an experiment. And I see people living a life that I could never dream of. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. Yeah, I would. If I had the discipline, that would be awesome. Also, just so you guys know, uh, the Jonas Brothers new album does come out this Friday and we were both very excited to listen. Yeah, to that's it. true. Um, like walls that song's crazy i fear they may have <laughs> reignited my passions <laughs> not necessarily not to the point of writing a fan fiction no but to the point of streaming their songs so often that they probably will be one of my most listened to artists I listen know. not ironically it is either. what it is it's being serious yeah sometimes when i go to the gym i i put Leave before you love me on a loop, and I just listen to that the entire hour and a half I'm there. This is me listening to Waffle House, driving literally anywhere. Waffle House is so good, such a good song. What are you gonna do? Uh, I ain't here to fight it. You know what I mean. All right, friends, we're gonna take a quick little break with our friends at HelloFresh. So, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. 
No more scouring the grocery store for that one ingredient to complete your recipe. HelloFresh takes away all that hassle by delivering fresh, pre-portioned ingredients to have exactly what you need and helps you cut down on food waste. Additionally, this May, HelloFresh is celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Try limited time authentic recipes created in partnership with Chef Serbi Sani of New York's Tagmo restaurant and enjoy a cultural taste tour right in your own kitchen. So I personally have used HelloFresh before. Everyone knows that I'm, for the most part, vegan. Sometimes I have dairy. They do have vegetarian options through here and it was super easy to do. I honestly thought they were exaggerating when they said it only takes 30 minutes. It took even less than that. Everything's already measured, like they said. And it honestly, I always forget how much cooking helps with my mental health. Like being active and doing something like this that's productive for me has been a huge help to my mental health. So I highly, highly recommend HelloFresh. Um, not only does it save me time, but I've done uh two recipes. I did these like veggie boats. Like, you know, people take the bell peppers and then they put like ground beef and stuff and then bake them in the oven. I watch videos like that on TikTok all the time. I did one that was just vegetables inside of it in another vegetable. Oh, there were zucchini boats. Oh my gosh, there was so good to have like bell peppers, onions, garlic. Girl, I was in there eating all of them. I literally made all of them and I ate all of them and they were really, really good. So you can go to hellofresh.com slash two idiot girl 16 and use code two idiot girl 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's go to hellofresh.com slash two idiot girl 16 and use code two idiot girl 16 for 16 free meals plus shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Now back to the episode. All right, so we're going to get into today's topic, which is us continuing to look through your personal am I the asshole scenarios. Yes. We did part one last week with Morgan. This week, it's just the two of us girls. Okay, this first one's from Jaylee. She said, am I the asshole for keeping a pack of lipsticks my ex-fiance bought after I kicked her out? I, 23-year-old female, was engaged to a 24-year-old female. Recently, I found out that she was cheating on me with one of her ex-boyfriends. He's also engaged. So Mm -hmm. I called off her engagement and asked her to move out. Before she left, she had been waiting months for a package to arrive that was a special order of lipsticks that she was wanting. When I checked the mail and I saw them, I decided to keep them for myself. She's been out of the apartment for a few weeks now and is still texting me about the lipsticks not being here yet. And I just keep telling her I haven't seen them. I don't plan on giving them to her because I simply just don't want her to experience the joy of it. Does that make me an asshole? It does, but justifiably so. Yeah. Sometimes it's okay to be a dick. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I think... The great one of the greatest fallacies of life is that it's bad to ever be a be mm-hmm. like an asshole or be mean. Sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. Sometimes it's literally like it's not even really about the lipsticks. It's just about you, mm-hmm. which is like slay. Like protecting your own peace in the sense yeah. of like, yeah. Well, because you know too, like how the fuck is she gonna get those lipsticks? You gotta go take them to her. What? Why? So she can use them to do a cute makeup look for the person she cheated on you with? Fuck that. I mean that and then I also think like that's what you're fucking worried about, not that exactly. you hurt my feelings. Exactly. Like ruined you, our relationship. You obliterated our, yeah. our engagement. Hell, hell yeah, it makes you an asshole, but that's not a bad thing. No. In this particular instance, that's not a bad thing. No, like one time I had drama with an old high school friend and she had like left her sweater at my house. I forgot about and that. And I wore it on vacation because I was like, I'm not fucking giving you back your sweater. You're mean to me. Yeah. And then um, I blocked her on Facebook and then I went to my A push like a study hour or whatever yeah such high school stuff and she came up to me we hadn't talked in like months and was like i know you have my sweater and i was like why are you talking to me yeah literally and i brought the house sweater somewhere i don't know where it is but hey you know what sometimes being petty is good for the soul (laughs) you know what i mean and i stand by that shit sometimes it's good to give yourself a win I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything. If it was, I, like, I a think che- if it was like a check or something she was being like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like money or something like that. Like, I mean, and, and you special order lipsticks from where? You know what I mean? Like, where are you going to, what are they? Thousand dollar lipsticks? Yeah. I doubt it. And even if they were, consider that the price of our relationship and you paid it. Mm-hmm. There you go. I get to keep them. That's why I think sometimes being petty, it, it's good for you. You know what I mean? That's the toll. Was that's the what pack I think. of lipsticks. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. It. The price of our relationship is whatever that fucking yeah. pack is worth. There you go. You paid it. There you go. Consider us even now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I also think, too, like, if someone's going to beat your door down about stuff like that, they're either a fucking horrible person. In well, which they case, are. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, which is the obvious answer. Mm-hmm. In this case, they're just a terrible fucking person. Or they're just trying to find an excuse mm-hmm. to keep talking to you because they want to continue to be in your life even though they harmed you beyond reason yeah either way they're bad you know what i mean so either way keep the fucking lipsticks 
I wouldn't feel bad about that. Not even. A, I would sleep like <sighs> soundly. Bitch. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't lose a wink of sleep. I over wouldn't. That. <laughs> I wouldn't be up a minute past my bedtime thinking about that. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, seriously. Hey, order them again. I I would order them again. They probably got lost in post. <laughs> Or just block her. Stop. Yeah, stop yeah. responding. Just fucking block her. Who cares? I love ignoring people. <laughs> I love pretending I never got your text. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way to prove whether to or not I did. people who are mean to me, not people I care about. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay, this next one's from Mimi. They said, am I the asshole for reporting sexist and gross shop talk? I work in a male-dominated field and am the only woman in my department. I want to report the gross comments that are made about women on a daily basis, but it will be obvious it's me, and I'm worried that I'll get mistreated. I'm also worried I'll feel awkward at work or seen as a snitch. What are your thoughts? Well, first off, I would say feeling like a snitch, who cares? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you feel like a snitch, this is, and I'm not saying this to attack you, that's like something where you're still seeking male validation. Like you still want them to like you. Yeah. If you see it as being a snitch, not wanting to create a hostile work environment that I understand. So, but oh, to that, I say, if it really bothers you that much, you should do something about it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's saying something yourself, sometimes going to like corporate is not the answer. Sometimes it's literally doing it yourself Yeah. because involving red tape, it, it just creates this like frenzy around it. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes it a lot bigger of a deal mm -hmm. and it, and it almost drags it out. Whereas if you said something yourself, right. It like, it forces them to confront it internally mm -hmm. and then they can decide, ah, she's a bitch. Don't talk. Don't say those things around her. Cause she's a bitch. And then in which case you win. Cause you don't have to hear it anymore. Yeah. Right. So me personally, I would handle it myself, but that's, you guys know how I am. Yeah. And if you're you know not I mean? a confrontational person, then maybe yeah. that isn't the best approach. Yeah. But if you do have friends at work who maybe are innocent bystanders, like we talked about this before, like what's annoying is men are more likely to take it more seriously. If another man, man says, says it, it yeah. then if you're they're like, of course you're going to complain about that. You're, you have tits. Hey, hey, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> You're a woman. But if you have like, a good coworker in there who just who doesn't let maybe he doesn't laugh at the jokes. He just kind of lets He's them pass, there. which is yeah. honestly kind of worse. Yeah. Maybe you can ask them to stand up for you and be like, or maybe stand up, be like, hey, we, that stuff's not funny. And honestly, like you don't have to be like me in the sense that because yeah, honestly, me personally, how I would handle that situation, I wouldn't be like, you shouldn't say that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't yeah. say something like that. What I would say is, if why is that funny? Yeah. If they're jokes, you'd be like, I don't get it. And then they'll be like, you know, because she's got big tits. And then you go, why is that funny? Yeah. And then just you, act genuinely yeah. confused. You don't like tits? Yeah. And just be like, I'm, I just, maybe I just don't understand the joke. Yeah. And then just kill the vibe. Yeah. If you kill the vibe, I promise they'll never tell a joke around you again. Because mm -hmm. they're going to be like, she's a wet blanket. Which like, I'd rather someone think that than think it's okay to talk about women. Exactly. Like that around me. Yeah. That's why I said, just be the worst vibe killer. Like be like, what are we laughing at? And then when they tell the joke, be like, <laughs> wait, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Wait, I don't understand. Can someone explain it to me? And then when they elaborate even further, you're like, okay, so she has big titties and that's bad. Makes, and then they're like, makes women stupid. I just, okay, well, maybe you had to be there. You know what I mean? Like say mm -hmm. shit like that. Yeah. And then just such a mood kill. And be like, all right, well, and then go back to your work, your workstation. Yeah. That's what I would do because it's a non-confrontational way of being confrontational. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're forcing them to explain their fucked up joke to you. Cause then it makes them, hopefully it would make them think twice about making jokes like that. Well, yeah, that. no one wants to hear back their offensive shit. Mm -hmm. Like when the, as much as they, they claim to like not care. Yeah. The minute you ask them to explain it to you further, they get very like either defensive mm -hmm. or they're like, Oh, forget it. Yeah. And it shuts it down. So that's that's what I would do. I wouldn't I wouldn't go to corporate only because like unless you really want to. Yeah. Unless it's it's turning into like physical, right? Or anything like, like that. Sexual harassment. That's, sexual yeah. harassment to that extent. Like to you personally or to someone you you care about, whatever. In that case, yeah, go to the authorities. Yeah. If it's stuff where they're like, oh, because even then, sometimes you might go to higher ups. Like I've reported being sexually harassed at work. Uh, and they and, don't take it seriously. Yeah. And they literally tell me, are you sure that's what they meant? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. How would you take that if I said that to you right now? 
Mm-hmm. And that's what I said in in the office. And they were like, see, this is the thing, Drew. Like, you know, sometimes people just, and they just talk you in fucking circles. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Oh, it's like she said, like shop talk. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like a waste of time, especially if it's just jokes, words, mm-hmm. right? They're like, oh, come on. Never heard a little titty joke before you know what i mean like it just you take yourself way too serious yeah and it just it makes you feel like shit mm-hmm. to be invalidated further like that like to go to higher ups and they don't take you seriously which may or may not happen but depending on your i would risk assess it first and then decide what's the best course mm-hmm. of action for you personally but that's what i would do i would just go in there and kill the vibe every time anytime they're sending in a group i'm joining it what are we talking about guys and then eventually they're going to be like nothing and they're all going to leave. Problem solved. <laughs> they're going to be like, she sucks. And wouldn't you rather people think you're boring than think like that they can just say crazy sexist shit around you? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd rather people think I was a fucking bitch, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next one's from Jenna. She said, am I the asshole for being a Capricorn? I need to know. Yeah. Next question. Okay. <laughs> I saw someone saying in the comments too that like you never bring up how Capricorns are really stubborn. Well, because I don't, I mean, the Capricorns I've met, I don't think are very stubborn. I think they're set in their ways. And what they do is they convince you to change your mind. They're like, mm. well, I don't know. Cause I mean, that's just what I think, but I don't know. Okay. And that's my fucking problem with you, Midges. It's not even really stubborn. I mean, it is stubborn, I guess, if you look at it from that lens. Mm-hmm. But I look at it as like, I'm not going to change my mind, so I'm going to make you change yours. Okay. So that's what I think it is. To answer your question, yes. Next. Okay, this next one from Caitlin. She said, my coworker is an art major, know-it-all, that has to give their opinion no matter the topic. <laughs> they constantly spark up convos between everyone just to talk about themselves. And I can only listen to a person talking so much. That I literally just disassociate and nod my head whenever they talk. Am I the asshole? Dason does this better than any uh, anyone else I've ever met, unless they're a Capricorn, because Dason's a Capricorn moon. When she doesn't want to talk or listen to your conversation, she doesn't. And it's, it's like, it's such a fucking, it's an insane thing to watch in real time. Like, she'll literally be like... <laughs> <laughs> and then she's not listening anymore. And you'd be shocked at how well that works on people. Like it makes people literally like go, Oh, and then that was it. Our manager, Phil, were you listening when he was talking about how he does that with people? Cause yeah. Like, yeah. He, he went said to school he, to be a therapist or something. Yeah. He said he'll sit in silence for an hour. He doesn't care. Yeah. So like he, if he doesn't want to talk, he doesn't. <laughs> and he just like turns his head and he'll st- He's not going to move. He's not going to, you know how like some people will like excuse themselves. Yeah. He doesn't do that. He literally is just like, no, I'm so bad at excusing myself. I'll just like... They're, I'm uh, not. I'm a master at leaving. I'm yeah. a master at That's leaving. That's what I'm saying. I'll stand there and disassociate while they're talking to me. I know, but she literally did... Her idea of disassociating <laughs> is literally just not listening. You know how most people who disassociate, they're not listening, but they look like they are? She doesn't look like she is, and she's not. So th- what do you call that? Not disassociating. That's called not listening. You know what I mean? That's two very different things. It's hard for me. No, but what my point is in bringing that up is that it's a, it's a very useful skill in certain situations. Sure, yeah. This is one of them. When you have someone who like talks to hear themselves talk or talks to set themselves up to talk more, mm-hmm. people like that are insufferable first yeah. of all. So if that's you fix it, um, but stop. It, yeah. <laughs> stop. But if that's, <laughs> that's not you and you're being subjected to it, turn off, like literally just be like, and just turn your back. She literally turns her back to people. <laughs> like we're standing in a circle. She'll turn and face the outside and not move. Like, and she doesn't give a fuck. I'm done talking. For someone for someone who's so easily embarrassed by the most ridiculous <laughs> things, she didn't give a fuck about that. I was just telling Amy, um, I was telling her the most, like I was telling her how uh, Peely's like my favorite trainer I've ever worked with. Yeah. Like, out of every coach, every personal trainer. Uh, he's my favorite one I've ever had. And I told her, because I'll tell him I don't want to run or do things that make me feel like I'm running. And guess what? He doesn't make me do them. Yeah. But I told like I told her, like, to me, the most em- if the most embarrassing thing I could do right now is go running on the treadmill in the gym. <laughs> That's my worst nightmare. Yeah, but if she's talking to pe- to several people at once that she's never really met before in a party of mixed company, 
And she doesn't want to listen anymore. She just doesn't. The worst thing I do, too, is like I'm trying to get over that. Um, well, a little bit. Um, but I'm trying to be more friendly to people I don't know. Because I'm always like, why are people talking to me when I go to the gym? or what we're Yeah, doing? I'm like that, too. But every time I am friendly, it, it comes back. to No, I know. Being. And that's what I'm saying. So, so then I think to myself, this is why I'm not nice to strangers. Like, I just... I pay for it so dearly. No, I know. So like that guy, when we took Squid to the gym on Saturday yeah. and he looked at me and I was like, oh, and then he was like, can I bet your dog? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, yeah, you. And then I was like, why am I still talking? I'm not. This is not a joke. I thought that that guy like was into you. No, I know. Like the way he was looking at you was weird. I was like. <laughs> And he kept doing it and it was annoying. I was and like, then I, and then I, if I, you want whole, just say that. Like, <laughs> and then I go, and then I keep talking. It's an energy. Like, cause I know, felt bad. And it's not like a delusion. I'm telling you, it's an energy where like my bitches who fuck men know, mm. you know, when they want to fuck you, like you could just feel it. You can sense it. Right. So like, that's so funny. Cause I thought that too. I'm not kidding the way. And I was trying to talk. Like, I, I was trying to talk too. And he, he didn't look at me once. <laughs> I don't even think he knew I was there. <laughs> he literally was talking to Jason like squid was her dog, even though he clearly was my dog. Yeah. And then like, he, he just would not, he was petting her, him and going looking at Jason. And then I was like, anyways, and I <laughs> Jason was like, but see like, no. And then he followed me to the stairmaster. I was waiting for him to say something to me and he didn't. And I was like, well, he chickened out. Yeah. He wasn't out. ugly either. He was cute. He wasn't. Yeah. He was short though. I know. And that's not, listen, I don't know him. <laughs> so I don't know if he's a bad guy, but he, he was tiny, but he was really nice. He was like barely taller than Dason and Dason's short. Yeah. Dason's like five, four. Mm. He was probably like five, five. Yeah, Teeny so tiny. we're still we're the same height. I'm basically yeah. five five. <laughs> I feel like when you say you're five four, you're five five. Like when you say you're five eleven, you're six feet. Eh, it depends. Yeah. When you're short, I don't think it I don't think that's the case, yeah. to be honest. But no, I thought when that you're too. when you're on the edge, yeah, they round up. And I was like, What? That's me to men always, to be honest. Well, that's why and then I was Thankfully, like Thankfully at my gym, like everybody knows I'm like essentially married so like nobody fucking bothers no, me. I know, and that's why we were like But I always all fresh know. meat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say. I've never seen that guy. No? No, I've never seen that man. And you know what's funny is like, um, I always know when there's new guys because yeah. they try to talk to me. Oh. And I'm always like, you don't know. Who's going to tell them? I, you're like, I hate to tell you. You're like taking your thing off because you think they're hitting on you. Like, I hate to tell you, but I'm taking. And he's like, no, I was going to ask if you. Are you done with the rack? I was going to say, can you hurry the fuck up? I yeah. have a set. I, need I was going to say, can you wipe your sweat off that <laughs> before I use it? Thanks. <laughs> I know, literally. Me just being thinking everyone wants to fuck me. Oh my god. No, I just wanted to tell you that your left tit has been out for an hour and no one's told you yeah. yet. Yeah. He's like, your chonies are hanging out of your You have a wedgie and it looks like it hurts. Yeah. I just wanted to help you. Your out. camel toe's pretty bad. So just <laughs> I just wanna tell see you. See it across the gym. But fuck me, I guess. No, so. I literally watched saw him stretching, like mm -hmm. And then I went on the stairmaster and then he went on the stairmaster and I was like, get out of here. Right next to you? No, because I went almost to the end. Yeah. Or no, I went on the last one and then he went on the very first one. He's like, he wants to fuck he's me so he's bad. He's walking and he's like, no, literally. <laughs> and then I'm on there watching the thing, memorizing sports facts to act like I watch the <laughs> games. My new bit. I um was talking to. Oh, my joke is going to be that when I'm sober, I think everyone hates me. But yeah. when I'm drunk, I'm convinced everyone wants to kiss me. Yeah. And who's to say they don't? Who's to say? You're going to get mad at me. You're going to get mad at me for that very true fact. I was trying to think of something else of me being nice to someone. And I'm like, see, that's why I Oh, don't. tell them the story about that guy that came up to talk about squid. <laughs> oh, yeah. This guy came up to me and he's new. That's how, that's how I know. Like, he's new. <laughs> he comes up. He's like, oh, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know yet, do you? <laughs> like me just being a dick. <laughs> um, Am I the asshole for thinking everyone wants to fuck me at the gym? <laughs> Um, this guy came up to me to ask me about squid and he was like, can I pet him? Is he friendly? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's friendly. And so then he starts petting him and then he goes, he's a beautiful dog. I'm like, oh, thanks. And then he goes, I have two dogs. And so this is when I tell Jason, like <laughs> when I start talking, when he starts talking to me, he's talking to me, like he's, he talks to me very normal. Mm. And then when I respond to what he says, he's, he is like just absolutely shocked that I said something bad. <laughs> Like every, it was almost like he felt like I was, he was acting as if he, he was being badgered by me. All right. I'll be him. And then you be who you. 
No, no, no. I'll be him and you be me. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so ask me to pet my dog. Okay. Um, what a beautiful dog. Can I pet him? Yeah, go ahead. He's really nice. Yeah, he is really nice. I have two dogs. Are they nice? What? <laughs> and then I and then he <laughs> go. Are your your dogs? Are they nice? Oh, I guess. Yeah, anyways, they're like, they're pretty big. I have like a German Shepherd and like a Belgian Malinois. Yeah, much bigger than him. <laughs> what? <laughs> and he was I literally, said the, your dogs are bigger than him. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> the way that I was like, all right, we're done. Like after that, I was like, we're done. Like I, this is why I don't talk to anybody in this goddamn gym. Like I literally was like, <laughs> He was acting like I burst into his home and I was like, tell me about your dogs. Tell me about them. <laughs> like or like you told him, get over here and come. Back. <laughs> and I was like, your dogs. Like, I'm like, I'm like emphasizing how much I need to know about them. Like he literally Are they was, nice? going, he was going like, what? Like that. Everything I said, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, Hey buddy, ever heard of a conversation? That's kind of how it goes. You talk and I talk and we say things that don't mean anything. And then you leave. Like that's typically how it works. Anyways. <laughs> so I was just like, and that's why I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> like that's why I don't, I, that's why I don't try to make random strangers friends. You know what I mean? Especially in the gym. No shit. Literally in the gym. No one should be allowed to talk to you. Anyone. I want um, like like a library. You know how like it's unspoken. Like everyone knows you can't be loud in the library. Yeah. In the gym, it should be known that you're not allowed to talk to other people. You know how in the Goblet of Fire, he puts that age ring around him. <laughs> I want that for just anybody. <laughs> like, I want it around me. And if you try to come in, it zaps you out. You know what I mean? <laughs> it shoots you out like a fucking cannon. I just want to, I want to cast it around me and only people who know me and talk to me all the time are allowed to come to my circle. Yeah. Or people that are nice. That Someone invented. Yeah. People that are nice. Yeah. Just no. Only people I know and would like to talk to oh, okay. are allowed to come in there. Okay. And then if I would like, I'll, I'll lower it and yeah. I can talk to new people. All right. I'll turn it off. There, there you go. go. Okay. This one's from an anonymous person. She said, am I the asshole for being mad at my friend for talking to a guy that I don't like? First off, for some background, this guy did something to my family that is unforgivable. And before that incident, my friend was seeing him for a short period of time. Recently, when we went out, we ran into him. I clearly told my friend that I was uncomfortable and unhappy that he was there. Uh, as she knows of the situation, instead of leaving, like I asked, she rolled down the window, called him over and proceeded to have a full conversation with him, even asking him when he was free. After I cooled off and told her how I felt and she sincerely apologized and owned up to her mistake. While I do feel her apology was genuine, I'm not sure if I'm ready to forgive her. Am I the asshole? No, I don't think that makes you an asshole. I think you move at your own pace, especially if you clearly communicated to her why you don't like him and for mm -hmm. what reason. And that you weren't comfortable with him coming over to yeah, the car. Yeah, well, and also the fact that she did it when you were there is just so inconsiderate. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if alcohol was involved and like maybe she was drunk and that's why. But either way. No one can tell you to forgive them, to hurry up and forgive them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, if she communicated that to you and you accept her apology, but you're just not quite there yet to like, like go back to normal, go back to normal, like start hanging out mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I don't think that makes you an asshole. I don't think so either. Especially if it was someone that did something really, I, we're super loyal to our family. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like it's not like, um, you three strikes and you're out. It's like no, one and you're it's done. It's one and done. So yeah. like, yeah, like I would be super pissed off. We would never do this. But if you did like reach out to someone who really hurt me. Yeah. Or like we see them out and you're like, hey, like that would really piss me off. No, it'd be quite the opposite. Honestly, <laughs> I'd go, I'd run, I'd like side tackle them. I'd like blind side <laughs> them. Just close line them. <laughs> yeah, dude. You wouldn't even, I'd, it'd be like that. Well, that's interesting because, and then he takes off running. That's me running, at, but like, I'm running towards them at full <laughs> tilt, like like an Oklahoma With drill, thing winding yeah, up. winding up like Popeye. <laughs> if I ever see that cheeky motherfucker, do you remember that? <laughs> Why that yada? Do you remember that TikTok? <laughs> I don't know anything about Taylor Swift or Jake Gyllenhaal, but if I ever see <laughs> that cheeky motherfucker, absolutely, that that's me. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't need any information other than they fucked with you and you don't like them. I don't need anything. Yeah, else me too. I don't need any proof. I don't need anything. Team you. I don't need a receipt. Just tell me and I'm there. Yeah. But it also depends. That's that's honestly, well, that's exclusive to my family. Yeah. Yeah. 
outside circles, it's a little different because you got to like, if you don't know someone that well, you, know, you don't salt, know. Yeah. yeah, you got to take it with a grain of salt. But my family, different, different case. So yeah. I don't think you're an asshole for taking your time because you didn't say like, I'm never going to hang out with her again. I'm never going to see her again. Mm -hmm. You're just like, I'm not quite there yet because yeah. I'm still upset. And I think that's fair. I also think communicating that is a sign of maturity, especially in your relationship. If you're like, hey, I just need a little bit of space. Yeah. I'm, I'm still a little bit upset. That's you recognizing your emotions and being like, I'm not in a, I'm not in a place where I can handle this right now. Mm -hmm. So I would rather like take some more time to figure out my shit. Yeah, and I'll cool get, yeah. off. Right. Like genuinely forgive you mm -hmm. and then move past it. What I think makes you an asshole in that situation is like, you get to a point where you're like, okay, I forgive you. And you tell them you forgive them and they try to go back to normal. And then you start treating them poorly because yeah. you're still thinking about it. I think, Oh, I think that makes you an asshole because you already said you forgave them. You said that you want to move forward. Mm -hmm. So you can't hold on to the past. So if you end up staying friends with this person, I, I mean, would, that's a boundary you're setting. So yeah, if it's they a boundary continue you're to be disrespected, then yeah. It's a, if they know that's a boundary that can't be crossed yeah. and you want to express that to them, like it's a hard line in the sand for me, then that's a good thing. But if you choose to forgive them and move on, you really got to move on. Yeah. Like you got to actually move on or try to anyway. But I don't think that makes you an asshole. No. Yeah. I think that's cool that you're setting boundaries with your friends. And I think we should cool all be doing that way more. Yeah. And I think it's cool that you're communicating that mm -hmm. to them and being like, I really love you, care for you, but like, I need some more time. Yeah. I think that's fair. It's really mature, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yes. Uh, I don't think all of you are assholes. I think we came to a consensus. You're all normal people. I don't think any of them we said you're an asshole. I think we were all like, you're not the asshole. Well, the first one I said you're an asshole, but that's funny. I think that's a good thing. It's camp at that point. There you go. Oh, you're right. Camp record. I'm an asshole for the bit. There we go. I would say. It's a running bit. And that's fine. Um, please look on our Instagram. We'll be posting the next poll for next week's episode for whatever the theme is. I'm going to pick it soon. Yes. But um, if you enjoyed this episode, you can stream all of our other audio episodes everywhere you can find podcasts. And the video version is always on the YouTube channel. But other than that, we hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.